Let me start up by saying my mom started her battle with small cell lung cancer in 2001 and it went to 2003. When she first got um, diagnosed, she knew that the chemo would wear her out. So I had started working at Myers, which is like a Target or a Walmart or a Kmart, basically. Um, it started out in her, in her lungs and in her lymph nodes. They couldn't operate on it. They said they couldn't anyway. So they did preventative radiation on her brain and radiation and chemo on her lungs and her in her lymph nodes and her neck. Um, they said they did preventative brain uh, radiation because they said that um, they noticed when people got um, uh, chemo and radiation and then went into remission, it suddenly went to their brain. So they gave her um, preventative radiation on her brain. Um, she still worked even when she had chemo. She was still working her butt off. She had always been so independent and always worked. She still worked. She still came home and did everything she always used to do. She used to come home, do the dishes, the laundry, clean out the cat litter box, you know, just everything. She just still cleaned. Um, I think it was about a year later it went to so-called remission in 2002, um, probably about the summer, about May or June. Um, so, so-called remission, all right, they did all these tests, yeah, you're in remission, okay. The next thing I know, her legs started tingling like they were always asleep, always, no matter what. When her legs started tingling, she, as usual, didn't want to have to go to the doctor and say anything. So she just waited it out. She was supposed to wait for six months to get a checkup to make sure that it was still in remission, but she went in, I think, a couple months earlier, beforehand, um, probably... August of that year, 2002, and they said that, well, it turns out it wasn't in remission. We did a, didn't do a test that would have caught it, that it was as a tumor in her spine, or on her spine somewhere, where calcium had also grown around it. It had slipped a disc and pinched a nerve, and that's why her legs were tingling all the time. So probably from August until December, it was a slow, yet probably, uh, steady progress where it just quickly, she had weak legs and couldn't stand up nearly as much. Probably early December, it started getting pretty darn bad. Um, she had a few accidents, couldn't get to the bathroom on time. By late December, early January the next year of 2003, she had decided, you know, I don't want to be at home without anybody here. I'm afraid someone's going to rob the place. There's going to be a fire or anything and I can't help myself. So she voluntarily said, okay, I'll go into hospice or a nursing home. She said that the uh, health care, her health care wouldn't pay for a nursing home, that they would only pay for hospice. And I do believe, she didn't say it, but I do believe it was because they knew that she wasn't going to live very long and that she wasn't going to be good. So basically, she went into hospice. She was okay, I thought. About April, on a Saturday, I remember seeing her. She was, eh, okay. Uh, my stepdad called and said if she talks kind of strange and she says things you don't know what she's talking about, don't acknowledge it, don't say anything, just be like, oh, okay. Um, they talked to her and it was the strangest thing. She said, I thought you told her not to come because I don't have the money for the tickets. So I didn't know what she was talking about and then and there I knew that it had had to have gone to her brain. Um, not two days later, a few days later at least, Sunday, as far as I remember, um, we went and saw her and she was doing pretty bad. Uh, I went home, I was scared she was going to die that night without me. Five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, I got a call from my stepdad. It's getting pretty bad. She's going to die any minute. So I went that day from 7 a.m. until probably about 1 p.m. We all stayed there. It was me, my stepdad, my aunt, my uncle, and my cousin. It was pretty hard because we were all trying not to cry. We went out for breaks outside just talking and stuff. And we all said our goodbyes to her. We all said, it's okay, you can go. And So she was on pain medication that knocked her out. But we're all hanging around trying to support her and you know, tell her it's okay to go. Around 1, we all went, uh, probably about noon actually, we went to lunch. Um, except for my stepfather. He stayed with her. When we came back, she was still hanging in there. Um, not too long later, they were like, we all got, we gotta go. So they left. Um, probably, and I swear to God, and I don't do that very often until, unless I mean it, or I know for a fact. 
I swear to God, about 15 minutes later, my mom finally let herself go. And it was weird because later on, my stepfather did say that that was one thing that she wanted, was to go in peace was one of them. And the second thing was that the only person in the room was me and my stepfather. That's the only people she wanted in the room. So she got what she wanted, and she was in peace when she died.